We're gonna bring it to life. Just like that, the pattern. Let's get into the real deal Holyfield. The Ultra Zero. This stuff right here is my go-to. This is the move. Some of my favorite. Finally got them their own aquarium. <laughs> Hello, Baker Bay Aloha, my Ohana. It is your boy back with another aquatic adventure. Now, if you're new to the channel, we talk about everything in the aquarium hobby. I'm in my fish room, my garage, aka Tiki Lounge, where I have one, two, three, four, five, six to be. I have six to be aquariums. So I have five running aquariums and then I just installed a new one and this is kind of part two of the second to last video that I put out if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about I'll leave a card up above click that card it talks about the scape of the new 75 gallon I call it the South American scape um, I'll do a quick review before we jump into this aquarium uh, but today's the day where we add fish and we're gonna bring it to life now before we do all that, I've been getting a lot of comments um, on how the Oscars are doing. I have an Oscar Army Aquarium where I have five beautiful Oscars in a 180 gallon aquarium. Let me flip the camera around and give you guys a quick update on the Oscar Army. And here is the Oscar Army. As you can see them cruising around, we have five Oscars in here and a Synodonis catfish that lives down in the bushes there. You can barely see it if you look really good. It's right in there. But anyways, uh, let's go over each Oscar. Look at this beautiful red. This is a red Oscar. Just majority of its body is, is like a bright, beautiful orange red. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Look at them. Look how beautiful. Such a beautiful Oscar. We have my lemon Oscar right here. This is a yellow Oscar. Super hard to find. I mean, for me, they are. To find a true lemon Oscar is really hard. Uh, a lot of fish stores will sell quote unquote lemon Oscars. And then when they grow up, they turn out to be albino. This is a yellow Oscar. I hope you can see how beautiful the yellow is on this Oscar. Um, if he gives me a side shot, give me a side shot. Come on, give the Ohana a side shot. No? They're looking for food, that's what they're doing. And then we have my beautiful Tiger Oscar down here. Look at that. Beauty, huh? Beautiful Tiger Oscar. Look at the coloration, the pattern, hence the name Tiger Oscar. And then we have our twins, Lutino Oscar. This is Lutino Oscar number one, Mary Kate, and Lutino Oscar number two, and that's Ashley. Yeah, these are the twins, my girls, Mary Kate and Ashley. I have no idea if they're male or female. Uh, but that's what I call them, uh, Lutino Oscar. Also a kind of a rare variant. I know a lot of you guys may be saying, oh, those are albino. They're not albino, Lutino. Don't get it twisted. These are beautiful, beautiful Oscars. Now, I still have a goal on getting some Oscars in this tank. I do want a Bumblebee Oscar. So if anybody knows where they have Bumblebee Oscars, Shout me out in the comments, man. I really want to get a Bumblebee Oscar for this aquarium. Uh, but also, I want to get a uh, Wild Caught Oscar, too. Wild Caught Oscars are beautiful. I know there's Blueberry Oscars out there. Yeah, they're a, like a blue tint. I'll show you a picture of those. Those are extremely rare. And I want to get an all-black Oscar. I don't know if you guys ever seen a black Oscar. It's totally black. It looks super cool. Those are probably the one, two, three, four Oscars that I want to get. Um, obviously, if I get four more Oscars, I'm going to need a bigger tank. You guys are going to have to stay tuned. I'm getting together with my boy, Dennis. And you know when I do collaborations with my boy, Dennis, who is the builder and kind of the co-founder of Tiki Lounge, um, when we get together, we do some pretty insane stuff. You know, uh, he's the one who helped me with Tiki Falls in the backyard, the above ground pond, and then, of course, Tiki Lounge, the fish room. So when we get together... Yeah, we do some work, some craziness. So we have big plans for Tiki Lounge, the fish room for some monster fish. These are my uh, beautiful Oscars. All right, so now let's get into the real deal Holyfield. And that's relevant, real deal Holyfield. Behind me is the volcano scape, but it's not about the volcano scape. It's about the South American scape right below that, okay? Let me flip the camera around and give you a quick update and then what our plans are. All right, here is the South American Aquarium. There's no water in it. That's what we're gonna do today in this video. But I did add the Higer Double Quartz right there in the corner. 
heater. It's the HG043. I did a product review on this heater. It's uh, turned out to be my favorite heater. I want all of my aquariums with this type of heater. Um, although I do have Higer heaters on all my aquariums. Look at, look at, look at the Oscar Army right next door. Higer heater right here. Oh, 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 right here above the volcano. Look at Higer heater. But I gotta say, this is their newest one and I absolutely love it. It's right here. We got to plug it in and get ready to go with this bad boy, but I wanted to show you that I did add the heater. We have two substrates in here, a sand substrate, and then it goes into a gravel. Now, there is a special trick that I used to keep these substrates from bleeding or running into each other. I have a divider. It's a plastic divider. It's used for landscaping. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. I placed it right here, as you can see the trim. You can see the separation of the gravel and the sand. This will keep the two substrates from bleeding into each other. It's like a little divider wall. Uh, go check out the video, all right? The South American video, and you will see what that divider looks like and how it works. And it's also fish safe. Now, I have this rock on top of the driftwood for now until the driftwood gets waterlogged and doesn't float. I'm not sure, I haven't used the, this driftwood in a while, so it may be dried out. And I don't wanna take the chance of it floating to the surface and kind of messing up the scape. So I just put that big piece of cobblestone on the wood to keep it weighted down. And then as soon as it gets waterlogged, I'll take that piece or that rock there and I'll stick it like right in here. and be a nice little, uh, maybe a breeding bed for some of the fish that if they wanna breed, they have a nice big stone. But that's what I plan on doing with that rock and this scape. I'm gonna show you some of the tricks that we have to use to fill up an aquarium so it doesn't disturb the sand or the substrate. All right, so here's one of my tricks. We got a Brute made by Rubbermaid. It's a 45 gallon trash bin with wheels. Now the wheels cost extra. You can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's. I got the big one, 45 gallon. We got our water in here that's treated uh, with our Microblift water conditioner, but then we also have the Ultra Zero water pump by CJ. Always use this. This is like my go-to pump. This is gonna pump all the fresh, clean water in our aquarium in a pretty good time. So I have it connected to a 30 foot hose. So we're just gonna run this right over to the aquarium. It makes it nice and easy. So let's go ahead, hit you with the time lapse and fill this bad boy up. Oh, hey, before I hit you with that time lapse, I forgot about the plastic bag move. Have you guys seen the plastic bag move? It's kind of an old school move. What I do is I take a plastic bag, especially on the new tanks, and I actually put it right over the hose nozzle. So the water's gonna come out of the hose and fill up the bag full of water, and then it's not going to disturb the sand or the gravel substrate, all right? Now let's hit the time lapse. All right, so I had to pick up the camera for you guys, and I wanted to show you how effective the plastic bag move is. Look at the water, look how crystal clear it is. It's not disturbing the sand. It's not disturbing the gravel. It's slowly filling up. And basically this plastic bag is just kind of like a shield or a bunker for the water to kind of ooze. As you can see it in the back there, you can see how clear it is. It's not disturbing any of the water. Look at the water level. Look how clear it is. Look at the sand. Nothing's being disturbed. This is the move, my Ohana, the good old grocery plastic bag move. And then you take it out slowly. As you can see, the water level is almost up covering the heater. We can go ahead and start up that bad boy. I gotta actually suction it to the glass there. It looks like the suction cup came off the glass, but all right, let's go and hit you with that time lapse. All right, so I had to pick up the camera one more time. As you can see, we're about a little over halfway full. Look how clear the water is. Now I'm gonna take my little aquascaping tool. It's actually a uh, algae scrubber, but I just use this while the water is low and I can actually mess with the gravel, so, or the sand, I should say. You know, if there's any patches, if I wanna fan this area and show some more wood, which that's what I wanna do. You see this wood, it's like dusting for dinosaur bones, you know, fossils. I mess with this little area here. And you can see our substrate from our gravel to our sand, it's like almost 
perfect. It's like a perfect little divider. Um, I'm gonna use this to fan up this little area here. I want some of this, oh look at we have a shell. Oh wow, it must have been in the sand. This looks like an old zebra nearite snail. I will put it over here as a decoration. <laughs> that's kind of cool. But anyways, I just like fanning off all this little extra sand that's accumulated. Like I said, it's like dusting for fossils, dinosaur fossils. Smooth out this little area here with this tool. Almost full, about three quarter way now. As you can see, the take is looking great, man. I'm loving the way it looks right now. Ooh. All right, I'll pick up the camera when it's totally done and we have the filters up and running. Boom, and just like that, we are full. Look how crystal clear the water is, the substrate isn't disturbed we use that plastic bag technique i'm telling you guys that's an old school trick too i didn't even make that up that's been around in the hobby forever you can see the substrate look at that sand substrate Ooh, it looks nice and clean look at that and it goes right into the gravel substrate nothing's kicked around there's no particles it's not like foggy or anything like that um you will see uh the way this is divided it's like we got two aquariums. You got a sand side and then you have a gravel side. It almost looks like it's like two different aquariums in one. So I'm really happy the way this turned out. We have our two HOBs. Hang on the back filters. These are my favorite filters ever. This is the 110 Seachem by Seache. This filters 100 gallons. We have two of them. So I'm always big on over filtration on my tanks, all right? I will double the filtration if I can. This is a 75 gallon tank. If you guys were wondering again, 75 gallon tank. We have artificial plant here, artificial plant here by Elite Cichlids. We got the Hyger heater that's kicking. It's doing good. It's doing its job. Everything's working. Now we got to make our special microblift cocktail. We're going to start off with some of this right here. This is microblift night out two this is starter bacteria as you can see down at the bottom right here new tank startup this is going to rapidly removes ammonia and nitrite this right here is what you want to do when you like jump start your aquarium okay this is a new aquarium although although if you look right there in the hob filter you see that media that media there is cycled Okay, so we have cycled media, meaning I've had that media in another tank. So that media is full of beneficial bacteria, but we're also gonna jumpstart it with, like I said, microblift night out. It's good for fresh and salt water. And then of course, we had to use microblift extreme water conditioner, all right? Just so you guys know, you have to condition your water. Your water is full of chlorine and chloramines. This is gonna help remove the chlorine and chloramines as you see right there. It also removes and detoxifies heavy metals and ammonia too as well. So this is my go-to with my aquariums. But then not only that though, we're also gonna dose this bad boy with Microblift Special Blend. This right here is beneficial bacteria, live beneficial bacteria. Cleans and clears water, reduces nitrate and reduces maintenance. But of course we always do water changes. This stuff right here is my go-to. And just so you know, it stinks so good. Microblift Special Blend Water Care, beneficial bacteria. So let's go ahead and add these into our aquarium now when you add microblift special blend you can see there's all these little particles in it uh that's beneficial bacteria now you obviously can't see it with the naked eye but i just want to let you know that is perfectly normal so if you see little particles uh that's normal now i added the proper amount but your boy always always especially with microblift special blend i always pour out a little for the homies Oh yeah, let's pour a little out for the homies. As you can see, all that goodness is gonna circulate in the aquarium. It's gonna settle and then we're ready to add fish, baby. That is special blend by Microblift. All right, just like I promised, we're not messing around. We got some of my favorite Geo Vegas redhead tapahos. I had to net them out of the six foot aquarium. They've been in there with some pretty aggressive fish and I'm so glad to give them their own little home. I'm gonna go ahead and release them into the water. There you guys go. You can see their color. They're still juvenile, so they're really, really young. Now, they originate 
from the Tapajos River in Brazil. Obrigado, Brasilia. They're known as the Earth Eaters because they sift through the sand and they actually clean the bottom of your aquarium, which is really good. For these guys to really thrive, they love the sandy bottoms, um, like I said, in which they sift through it looking for particles, uh, food particles, uh, cleaning the bottom of the tank. So they are a bottom cleaner for your aquarium or any aquarium, I should say. Uh, they are omnivore, so vegetables and protein-based diet. Uh, you know, the, the typical flake food, sink and pellets are ideal. Algae wafers that sink to the bottom. They also love uh, bloodworms, brine shrimp, and uh, spirulina algae. Not super aggressive for a cichlid. They are considered a cichlid. I know they're kind of hanging out here in this corner here. They're just probably just getting used to their little environment, which is all good. Um, out of the Geo Vegas species, they are on the smaller end, which I like. Uh, six to eight inches, they'll grow. There you go. You can see him doing his job, sifting through the sand, looking for some food particles. I'm going to give them a little bit of food in a second. Uh, but that's what I wanted to see them sift through the sand. That's what they're, they're made for. Like I said, they're called Earth Eaters. The colors on these are insane. Let me show you a picture of what an adult... Geo Vegas redhead Tapaho looks like and you can see what these guys hopefully strive to be look at that huh you see the beautiful redhead uh, but I'm sure that their color will definitely come out in this um, aquarium because they're not gonna be stressed out with a bunch of predatory cichlids in there you know chasing them around or whatever I do love the fact that I look at them I love them sifting through the sand already this is the one that has um, probably bumped his head on some of the driftwood being chased that's what it kind of looks like some scratches i'm gonna watch it if it tends to get any worse i'm going to treat him with minfin all right let's add two more fish <laughs> to this aquarium all right so these fish were in a critter box in the six foot aquarium and i'm so glad that i finally got them their own aquarium this is a fish that i've always wanted to keep and the reason why i actually created this aquarium was to keep these beautiful clouded archer fish or zebra archer fish is what they call them originate from asia in the southern myanmar i think i said that right it's located between bangladesh and thailand they do have other archer fish which need brackish water which is half salt water half fresh water i was really looking for the clouded archers because they are strictly fresh water now they are uh, carnivore so their diet mainly uh, high protein Floating pellets, uh, they they love the dry bloodworms, absolutely love dry bloodworms. Uh, frozen bloodworms, of course, they'd eat, uh, but their main diet in the wild are insects as they shoot streams of water out of their mouth um, ex with extreme accuracy too by using like a network of tubes in the roof of their mouth along with the well-grooved tongue in which aids in water shooting they are extremely accurate when they shoot uh, a stream of water and their depth perception to see something out of the water and to hit it while underwater is insane now they are on the smaller end of the archer fish species they will get to about six to eight inches uh there have been cases of 12 inches too so honestly i'd like to get at least one more so i'd like to get three clouded archer fish now my plans with this fish is i want to get these guys to shoot water out of their mouth at some food that we need to you know get them so eventually i want to do like live crickets and then have these guys shoot the live crickets so i'd maybe drop the water level down to maybe halfway and then see if I can get these guys to shoot or maybe we can put some dried blood worms on the glass and see them shoot it down into the water and eat to see that natural instinct come out in them. Big shout out to Aquarium and Reptile Depot. If you guys want some clouded archer fish, that's where I got them along with uh, the redhead tapahoes. I just need one more redhead tapaho and one more clouded archer fish. You gotta watch their temperament. If you put in fish that are smaller than them, they will go after them and eat them. So, you know, I don't think I'm going to put any like smaller tetras in here, although they all are small. They're a little bit smaller than my geos, which are hanging out right here. So I think the geos and the archer fish are a good size. Look at them. 
God, I love these guys. Well, it looks like I can't call that aquarium the South American Aquarium because I have two clouded archerfish, which are from South Asia. So maybe we'll call it the South American Asia Aquarium. Uh, we have the two redhead tapahoes, Geo Vegas. And uh, I have an idea. I have an idea um, of another fish I want to stick in there, which I think is going to be an awesome accent fish. Um, to go in that aquarium. I have to head over to Aquarium and Reptile Depot because I know they have them there. I don't know if they still have them, but I'm gonna double check. Uh, stay tuned for an up and coming video. Speaking of Aquarium and Reptile Depot, go check them out, all right? They have an online store. It is called depotpet.shop. All of their links will be down in the description below. Big shout out to Jeff and Jason, the entire staff. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys on the next video. Take care, much love, and aloha.